Go on. We would do shows. <laughs> Tell them what we did. It seems like every show, <laughs> it seems like most shows, the power would go out. <laughs> that was what I the, did beats, the beat would stop. The, the DJ would, wouldn't have a record. Like, like, like you know, there was some kind of malfunction that would happen at our shows. So, when that happened, you got we had Knowledge Bill who would grab the mic and it was just like routine. You would get the beatbox. The beatbox, which is a classic form of hip-hop, you know, way of expression. Yeah, we had rhymes and all that and break yes. dancing, but it also was... And that's what we would freestyle or rhyme or rhyme over. We had the well, we had a beat for the rhyme, and it was perfect. And I come in this way, and I, you know what I'm saying. Yeah. But that shit would be what when the power would go out, that shit was over. Yep. So you had to improvise over the beatbox. And I did many rhymes. I did many shows over a beatbox. But guess what? The yeah. crowd loved it. Yeah. They didn't like it. They loved they it. They loved it. It's the energy. You know, you, you, you know what I mean? So, as you can hear, this is the Ask Your Old Head podcast with Justice Raji. And this is my brother, Nabri Savior. Peace, Nabri. Peace. So, if you haven't seen already, this is the energy. This is going to be um, a different style. Of the previous podcast I had, it is four in the morning. I'm on my brother's schedule, and it's I love my him. Schedule, you know what I mean? life. So one question thing I didn't tell you before we get into the questions, God, I always start with you giving you the opportunity to give some reverence or love to somebody you just want to shout out, big up. So go for it. Yo, man, I'm I'm like emotional right now because <laughs> like I don't cry a lot, man. <laughs> I don't cry at funerals. You know, I don't cry. I don't. I, I really don't cry a lot, man. But yeah. uh, when I speak about this guy, <laughs> Justice Raji, I don't know. I just get emotional and I, 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 I cry. But I want to shout out Justice Raji. This is uh, Justice Raji Allah. Peace. You know, um, my righteous brother, man. You know, straight up, <laughs> um, him definitely like the gods and earths. You know, period. Across the nation, across the world, but I want to give a shout out to Justice Raji because he is uh, the example of a uh, man's man and right. just a big brother and the embodiment of strength. You know, you don't find these days many people who, um, just show you how to be strong by example. Right. And he is one brother who never complained about doing whatever uh, you needed him to do. He didn't give you excuses, uh, but he gave you, like, you know, he gave you order. He gave you instruction. He gave you, like, you know, this is when I'm available. Yo, I can help you move. I'm going to help you move. But it's going to be at 3 o'clock. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And at this time, we're going we to do it. Yeah. Rain, if it's raining, I don't care. We're going to do it at this time. Yes, sir. But I got you. Yes. Uh, that was him, man. And it just showed me that when I get in jams or, you know, when I don't want to do something at all, I might bug out. I may cuss and fuss. But um, I think about, you know, Justice. He's, he's like that. For a while, it was a, it was a time where like the, what would Jesus do? Wristbands was like popular. Whoever made those is a fucking millionaire, <laughs> billionaire. Uh, but it was WWJD, you know. And I would and my thing is not what would Jesus do, you know. What would justice do <laughs> in situations like that? And that's what I would you know move on. I mean, honestly, what would you know? Definitely what like the gods do, right? But it was like, in times, what would justice do, you know, in these situations? It's like, yo, man, you got to do what makes sense and what's right, you know, on um, regards to whom or what, because you are a sad person. 
uh-huh. that ability, especially if you are that said person uh-huh. of that ability. So, Word. yeah. Please, God. Thank you. So, shout out to Justice Roger. Man. <laughs> Thank you, Almighty. Let's get into this first question. Live bro. from Portland. Live. Portland, right now, Oregon. On the internet. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> so, Worldwide. Nabri, what's the standard or practice, something that you do, um, a way you approach the world that you think is important about how you uh, move as a man in the world? One thing. One thing. Only one. <sighs> Um, integrity, definitely. Okay. Um, but I, I look at uh, it's vibes to me. Okay. Um, you know. Uh, what's important to me is positive energy. Pardon me. Okay. So I'm gonna say energy. Okay. Um, and you know I gotta <clears throat> if I feel the positive energy, man, I'm 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 moving on that direction. You know. Okay. Um, even in myself, like if I feel in a negative mood, I won't go to work. I'm gonna keep it on it. I'm gonna, I'm, I won't go to work or I won't be around people or I strive to not be around folks if my energy is off. You know, so I think energy is important because you know, energy <clears throat> cannot be destroyed. It can only be transferred. So that's real shit. That's one of the first things I learned when I got knowledge itself is that energy cannot be destroyed. It's just transferred. Mm-hmm. So if you negative... You you go and give that off to somebody. If you're yeah. positive, you won't give it off to somebody. So I look at energy from other people. And if I feel that it's off or it's negative, you know, I move a certain I move away from that. Um so so that's important to me as a man, especially in the, now in these days, with all that's happening in the world, energy, man. Right. Energy. All right, all right. So second question. So we're gonna we're gonna we're gonna we're going to be aggressive in our timeline because we got a lot of other stuff that's going to be said just so I know how you Word. get down. Relationships, broadly defined, what's something that you do differently now that maybe um, you approach differently as a younger man? And that's, you know, that's romantic relationships, that's family, that's professional, that's work, that's community, whatever, however you're feeling about it right now. Something you do differently. Being so giving, <clears throat> being so giving, you know, um, I'm one who's a private soldier, man. So peace and shouts out to the private soldiers. Um, and I'm also one who's a, a lieutenant. You know, a lieutenant is one who could take orders from the captain. You know, a lieutenant is not no sucker. Mm-hmm. A private soldier is not no sucker. You know what I'm saying? I guess in these days they use the term goons. We got viewers. These terms we got, you know, you, we, people say they got goons, but like private soldiers would be like your goons, right? Mm-hmm. Um. So, um, I would be more wise on who I gave loyalty to because. The private soldiers are loyal. A, a lieutenant is loyal. Um, just being down for something and causes mm-hmm. and people just want to strength. Um, not knowing or knowing that they, they aren't as loyal to you on the strength. Um, so these days I move more um, reluctant to give that availability to be loyal yeah. to people in situations that I may have once been on before in the past. Right, right. That's peace because, you know, <laughs> something I, I've um, learned to live by is that, you know, when you're one that's willing to give, especially in the society that we live in, 
most people are, or I'll say, more people are trained to want to just take. Right. Right? Than to, right. Than to deal with reciprocity, right? So right. Like, you like, yo, oh, nah, take, I take, 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 take. You know what I mean? I need something, nah, oh, I got you. Right? And then, then you know, when Nabri needs something, it's like, ah, 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 ah. let me tell you, ah, 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 ah. right? And so being a giver. Or oh, it's like, you. fuck Nabri. <laughs> fuck that nigga, B. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> fuck Nabri. And it, like, fuck that nigga. Like, you know, it's like, whoa. Yeah. Because it's like, you know, like you said, like, you know, you know, capitalist society we live in, you know what I'm saying? It's like, fuck you, pay me. Mm-hmm. What do I get out of this? Um, but what you said, it just hit something. You said, um, this is about relationships. A relationship. When I first heard this, I was like, what? But a relationship is give or take. Mm-hmm. A relationship is give and take. Yes, sir. A relationship is give and take. This is the table. What are you bringing to the table? Mm -hmm. (laughs) It's give and take. We call that equality. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's pre-mathematics. That's equality. Equality is what you bring forth to the table or, you know, whatever. So, yeah, God, I'm... um, Being so quick. I mean, I, I get you know, it's 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 really is us. Just and I think black people, we just give a lot. Period. We're just available. We're just forgiving. Period. Mm-hmm. You know, like straight up, we mm-hmm. are the most cuss you out the day of the issue. Oh, pardon me. Cuss you out the day of the issue. Yes, sir. Hate you the day of the issue. <laughs> Yet. Love you, mm-hmm. you know. After the fact, like we we are the most forgiving people on the planet. The black people are the most forgiving people on the planet for whatever. You know what I'm saying? Like, so I think that hurts us, mm-hmm. um, as well as helps us. But it hurts us. Mm-hmm. I think it hurts us more than it helps us. Me being aware of that is why I say I'm more reluctant to give my, to be so available, mm-hmm. you know, to um, those situations. Yeah. Well, I mean, I've learned that in the, the preservation of your physical and mental health, it um, it requires setting good boundaries. Right. You know what I mean, where you let people, you know, you give people, you give them the space, you let them know what I can do. Right. And where I got to, I got to tap out. Right. I can't. You know what I mean? Like, I can't do it. Like, oh, I'm, 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 you know. Now, sometimes you bend. Sometimes you go hard, right? Right. You go, we doing this right now. Because you. my brother said, I said, God, we could do it in the morning. Right. I was thinking, like, 10 a.m., 10 a.m., 11.30. 11.30. What he hit me with? He hit me with the, <laughs> I get off work at 2 a.m. At 2 a.m. I said, ah. Let's do it. You know what I mean? Let's but do you know it. what? I'm here. We live. Because that would have been. I'd have been and here. I gotta bend for you. I gotta do it for you, cause guess what? I'm gonna be. I'm gonna go home, and okay. I'm, it's gonna be a couple months before I'm back out this way. That's, that's at that. a minimum, you know what I mean, it might, probably it it's gonna be, be next year. Let, uh, I'm gonna uh, keep it 100. It's gonna okay. be next year. Let's be. Let this sink in. It feels like yesterday, God. Yeah. But I haven't seen you since that. Uh, when I came, I think when I came up, it was like an overnight because I I stayed. Did I crash at your rest, like to sleep to get up in the car or somebody somebody's home? I think that's the last time I saw it you. Mine. It was somebody's mine. spot. Okay. And I and I drove up because I came. Yeah, you see did my come mom. in. You I did drove come up in. And you like came in from work or something. Hold up. Based off what he just said, we got viewers. Where do you think his mom? Where do you think his mom lives? But he said you know, <laughs> he said it so smooth and eloquently. <laughs> he went to go see his mom. Yeah. And he drove up to check us out. His mom lives in New Jersey. <laughs> That's where I'm from. New Jersey is where, is where he's from. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? But he got knowledge of himself in Pittsburgh, so we know he's power born, certified stamp, <laughs> original firstborn. 
These first guys. nine. These guys. However, he drove from the he how, how, now hold up Re- relationships. How many friends that you got that you know would go and see their mother in the next state? Well, how many states is Jersey? From? It's one state, but it's one 300 state. miles. It's 300 miles. 300, here there. What friend do you know? How many good relationships do you know that you have? Who in your phone contact list would be 300 miles away visiting their mother and say, you know what? I'm going to just go see my friend Nabri. I'm going to just go see, you know what I'm saying, my homies 300 miles away. I'm going to just drive. I'm going to just hit the turnpike and go see them and be just like, whatever. Y'all want to do? I'm down. You probably didn't got one motherfucker on your contact list. Who would who would do that? With a smile, drop of a dime, own gas money in the car, <laughs> ain't asked for shit. <laughs> Coming up here, sleep on the fucking floor. This man right here. Nah, but, but yeah, that was like, well, hold on, hold on. Even that was like. That was a minute ago. It's 2018, God. I want to. I, 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 I want to say that was like eight years ago. Yeah, it's. It, I would say honestly, I'm gonna have to actually go, because I've been trying to figure out, and I'm, I'm I'm working a timeline, and I've been trying to figure out exactly a few of the trips because I came up a couple. I came up like a year after. So maybe 2012. And then I came. Um, I came 2009 to 2010. I came for uh, I Majestics. <laughs> Uh, and like birthday and homecoming or something at Pitt, and then, but somewhere in between there, there was some other that that pop up was somewhere in there because I don't think I saw you when I came up. Okay, to the homecoming joint. I think okay. I think you gave me the like, yo, God, I'm working. Yeah, you know I mean, I you know the, the timing just ain't work out. Okay, yeah, you know I mean, um, I'm always working. Yeah, God is a hard you hard working man. Child support. <laughs> Child support. You got to work at it, God. You definitely work at. I'm gonna tell. I'm gonna tell the people this because people may not. Those that don't know, <laughs> Nabri is a hardworking man. You know what I mean? And I'm gonna say, for the record, at least from my knowledge, his peoples is hardworking people. Facts. Moms that's and a pops. Fact. Moms and pops. Is that's out a here. fact. And he always the, gives love. The, the hustle. Moms and pops. The hustle, and the work ethic drive, comes from my parents. Yeah. Like you know. About to get me teary out again. Ah, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, but that's this, what I'm this, talking this, about. This blue collar you know I and mean? hustling with me comes from, you know, my great parents, man. You know, like, you know, word up. Like, you know, uh, I never, you know, I subscribe to, like, mm-hmm. a mystery God, you know, when I was, like, you know, like, like coming up. But... You know, as far as I'm concerned, my dad, my father was God. You know what I'm saying? Because that's who did everything, you know what I'm saying, for us, for me. You know you know what I'm saying? That, you know, turned the unknown to the known. Yeah. You, know, you, know, you know what I mean? So the, the ethic came from that. Like, I wanted to be a hard worker just like my father. Right. You know, I wanted to be a, you know, a hustler just like my mother. So that's where it all comes from. And then, then just be, and I wanted to be, and I wanted to look good mm-hmm. doing the shit. <laughs> and that's what they did. And that's who they are to, to this day. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, this shit is just like natural. You know, you, know, you know what I mean? But again, it's kind of how I got tried to, try to, try to, try to get the knowledge itself yeah. was seeing that shit too. Like, oh, these motherfuckers is bad. You know what I'm saying? And they want some other shit. And I'm on some other shit. Yo, I gotta, I gotta meet them, and ironically, this is called ask your old head. I always have respect for old heads, or for those who were above me had respect, and I think that took me a long way. Is the is the respect, you know mm-hmm. what I'm saying? Because respect goes a long way, and I've been in situations where I'm sure that if I wasn't respected and didn't have or give that respect, that. I could have been in a bad situation. 
Yes, you sir. know what I'm saying? Yes, sir. Word up, word up. So what's what what right now is really important for you in your life? Now, what's what's this anything, any one thing that you think is just really important for you that you are focused on in some way or another? Um <laughs> Cause I still think I'm young, you know, right? Yeah. Even though I'm 37. Yeah, 30, God, 37, I'm young. 37 is not old. Um, 37 is what I call young old. What's really. important to me now is, you know, um, being a stand-up, solid, good example, you know, for myself and others, for my children, you know, and for, you know, um, us as, as a whole, as a people, man, um, mm-hmm. being a contributor, you know what I'm saying, giving back any way I can, you know, but I, you know, ever, ever since I got knowledge, you know, it's been each one, teach one, so I think and feels that I give back a lot as far as, like, information, um, knowledge, where I can, um, experiences, I'm like an open book, you mm-hmm. know, for the most part. Yeah. So what's important to me is um, being consistent with that. And being consistent, you know what I'm saying? Like I said, if it's, you know, just with a lot of things, you know what I'm saying? If not everything. But what's important to me is also to keep spreading the the the, the, the teachings of, you know, Allah. You know what I'm saying? I'm mean, the nation of gods on earth. You know what I'm saying? I mean... It, uh, uh, teaching mathematics, you know what I'm saying, civilized and non-civilized is what's important to me, you know, because that's my duty. Mm-hmm. So that's what I love doing, what, what, what I'm doing, what, uh, what I'm into, what I'm going to be into. All right. Peace, all right. Thank you for sharing. So um, I'm going to take us to two things, you know what I mean, and then we're going to start to move toward a wrap-up. What's the, what's the science on the Jitney hat, man? Because I know some folks that might be watching right now, some folks that follow your joint, when you hit them with the Jitney hat, what, what's, viewers right now. what's the science? Man? What's tell, give give for those, because I, 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 I lived out here. I lived out here, right? So I know when, oh, when y'all is, talk about Jitney, well, yeah. Pittsburgh dudes, I know what that's about. But you need, you know, for those that don't know, what is that about? The Jitney... I always had respect for jitneys. Mm-hmm. You know, we catch jitneys, caught jitneys in the black community. You know, when the whole jitney science is, you know, it's been around since the nineteen like thirties mm-hmm. or whatnot in Pittsburgh. Um, you know, when taxi cabs would not come to the black community, yes, sir, is how. And why Jitney's developed, which is like a, you know, a black taxi driver, you know, in a sense. Mm-hmm. Um, and a lot of folks don't know, like when buses were missed, going back to 1930s, right? When buses were missed downtown, there was Jitney's, and the whole beep in the horn thing extends back till since then. Mm-hmm. Cause you might can catch you might can go downtown like, like till this day and a, someone's beeping their horn mm-hmm. that alerts you that that's a jitney, a taxi driver. Yeah. Um that could take you at that time was like taking you to the hill. Mm-hmm. Hill hill district when you missed the bus. So I appreciate Respect and honor that history. Mm-hmm. I was, you know, Jenny, there was Jitneys who took care of their family. It was like retired, like men, black men who were like steel mill workers, mm-hmm. blue collar workers, who retired, who would Jitney, you know, as like supplemental income. But they were, they were Jenny, which is like a service to the black community. Yes, sir. And that's where I look at Jenny. It's a service to the black community. Now, these Jenny drivers, these, these drivers who were Jenny's, you know, 
will wear their hats a certain way. You know, like older men don't care how they wear their hats, wear that. <laughs> especially winter caps. Yeah, they'll wear a skull cap till it's fucking holes in it, Lenny. You know, that's what they would wear. Yeah, and they would like, and they would cuff their hat a certain way. They would, they would like roll it up. Yeah, like three, four times. So it's on their head, yeah. but yet, yet it's not on their head. And you know, there's a kid catching jitney. I would look at that, and we would like joke, oh, he got a jitney hat on. We would joke, and so that's been since I was a kid. I'm 37 years old. As a kid, we would like talk about that and joke about that. So I find me being older, you know, I was I started jitney in like, Seven years ago, mm-hmm. um, and my sense of it was when I was doing it, it wasn't all about the money. It was like you know, I was, I felt as though I was servicing the the community, so I enjoy picking people up and taking them where they gotta go. And I and, the, uh, and when I was a younger like like my cousin dated a guy who was a jitney, I, actually part of me, she dated a guy but they had a child which is my younger cousin, mm-hmm. and he was a jitney driver. This is what he did. He right. made great money. He was able to take care of his family from jitneying. A lot of people, a lot of drivers who didn't have a job who weren't blue collar workers, were able to take care of their families. From Jitney in. You gotta respect that. Yeah. August Wilson had a what a word. He wrote a play about it, yeah. right? So this is real. This is this is this is authentic Pittsburgh history. It was a job that a man or woman could, you know, uh pursue and take care of their families, you know, um through through this service. So anyway, fast forward, when I would wear my skull caps at work or whatever, you know, I'll I'll be hot. So I would roll them up. And I realized me rolling them up, I started looking like the Jitney, the old man Jitney drivers mm-hmm. <laughs> who I would, you know, to take and see. Yeah. So I liked it. I always like being I'm the type of guy, if somebody if everybody's going left, I'm gonna go right. If everybody's going right, I'm gonna go left. So I embrace that. Yeah. Say yeah, it's my jitney hat. I got, I, got, I got my jitney hat on, so I just start. I just yo, know, it's my jitney. So I had so, so 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 by me embracing the the whole wearing a jitney hat and just styling it every day, just it's what I was, what I had. Um, I said I said you know what, I'm gonna own this shit, right? Mm-hmm. So. And that's the black man, right? I'm the original man, the maker, the owner. You know what I'm saying? That's who we are, you know, by birth. So I'm going to own this Jitney hat shit. So it's mine. So, yeah, Jitney hat. And that's where the idea came from. But it's rooted in history. And most folks don't know that it's rooted in in, in history. It's not just, like, something I'm doing as a joke. Right, right, right. right. It's just something It's something that... When the fad goes away, when folks stop rolling, they, and a lot of folks are rolling their hats up and shit, and you know, whatever, and calling it Jitney hats, yeah, but I don't give a fuck if nobody likes my picture that I post <laughs> with my hat rolled up, or they diss me, you know what I'm saying, whatever. It's what I fucking do. And when I, folks is not doing it, it's what I do, because I just like rolling my hats up, and I, I know where it comes from. It's authentic Pittsburgh history. So... That's where you got Jitney hat from. Word up. Appreciate that. Did I answer that? Did yes. Answer that right? Yes. Was that informative and that, enough? That was beautiful. You know what I mean? So I'm gonna do like one more thing, then we're gonna we're gonna tap it out because because you, you you're giving it up tonight. Well, that's what we do. It. I we build. It. The gods build. But when you get stimulated, you gotta build. You can't just get stimulated and just be sitting on the couch right. or just sitting somewhere just being bugged out. Nah, we that's what we build. It's where we, you know, ask questions or we just have deep conversation. We master the high. We don't let the high master you. Yes, sir. So, 
You want to close out with movies, music. What's, what, where, where you at? Where you feeling? Need to get some love on. What, what do you mean? Well, I'm going to ask you a question. Okay. About movies or music, depending on what you choose. And that's going to be, you know, outside of our, 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 our closing uh, salutations. The last movie I seen was... <laughs> what you seen? Sorry to Bother You. Ah. Uh. You see? Did you see that? Yeah, I did. Oh, uh, now, without, shit, just seen without, it. Without, without, so, without revealing your... too much about what happened in the movie, because I just want people to go see it. Okay. Let's, but we well, you know it's almost, probably, it's probably almost out the movie theater. I know. So we could just, we just going to go. Okay. And if you ain't see it, spoiler alert, you know what I mean? Go okay. watch the movie. Stop being a sucker. All right. Do you got a question for me? Because it sounds like you got a question for me about yeah, this. Yeah, I Ask do. Ask me the question. Because I'm going to tell you something. All right. How can I word this? Oh shit! How was that working, dude? I did a. I, I was on an Uber trip. Okay. And have a conversation with the rider, and she told me she's like, "Did you go see Smart to Bother You?" Mm-hmm. And I was like, "Not yet, right. but I'm going tonight." Yeah. Word is bomb. I went that night. Okay. Trying to understand why she said it though. Oh, oh, we were talking about LeBron School. Okay, okay. LeBron School. I'm building, God. I'm, I'm, I'm in my bag about the LeBron School. And that's what she mentioned. The okay. sorry to bother you shit. Okay. It shit bugged me out <laughs> after I seen the fucking movie. I'm like, how the fuck? Do you relate the LeBron school shit? Hmm. So what I mean, did, like she, the have a, did nah. she have a did she have a specific question or did she just say LeBron school? Like you were talking about LeBron school, then she was like, What about sorry to bother you? And then like what did what I'm trying to understand, I guess, why she asked me did I did did, did, did I see the movie? You know, you know we the guys we build, we go all all all, all over. Mm-hmm. I think I was mentioning, I was talking about, you know, like fast food, like how really you could be a bum and survive. How society's making it to where you could be a bum and survive. Here's what I mean. Word is born. This is what we do. I got now myself when I was 18 years old, really 16. But 18 years old. And it was when you drinking, you this is what you had to do. You had to you had to build. So the spoiler alert, you couldn't just be high out of your mind. You had to have constructive conversations. But anyway, how the fuck is there a dollar menu? <laughs> There's a dollar menu. You can pay a handle and get a dollar, right? Mm-hmm. And you can go get a sandwich at Wendy's or McDonald's. But I'm going to just say Wendy's because I know that's for sure. <laughs> you, 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 you get a sandwich for a dollar and some change. So technically, as far as like eating, you can survive. Yeah. yeah. I don't know how long. But you can survive off of eating dollar sandwiches a day. And then I'm trying to tell her, you know, society's make it to where it kind of like, you know, you, you can kind of like wing it. You can kind of like mm-hmm. get by. Through saying that shit, she and she was like, what uh, Okay, all right. I think I know the angle. Then she was I think like, I got the angle where she might have came from. Let me, okay. All right. First thing I'm going to say is this. Survival is sort of the lowest state of existence. Because survival just means you get the basic level of, like, in food nutrients you need to keep your, your, you know, the body is basically a chain reaction that's ongoing. Okay. And if you don't eat more food, the reaction starts to break down, right? So you could eat not very good food and keep going for a very long time. You can get 70, 80 years old eating terrible Okay. You get even older than that. This motherfucker's been in the hundred eating terrible. 
right? Okay. So there's that. The, the the piece I think and she might have been tapping on it. I don't know really where it would land with the move with what LeBron's doing, but the the thing piece where they was basically convincing motherfuckers like, yo, you know what might be an option if you're struggling? Contract up, give your life up to live in this motherfucking uh live in, basically live in prison and work. We're gonna feed you, we're gonna let you sleep. Yeah, remember that? We're gonna give you some food. And the motherfucker was that he was actually contemplating. And he was that. like, damn, I'm struggling. I might do that uh better life or whatever. Yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. And, and 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 the challenge and, and I think it was three hots in the car. Three, like we're gonna feed you, you can stay here, you know I mean you just gotta go to work every day. And you might be like, damn, this shit's stressful. If I do that, I'ma eat. You know what I mean? I'm gonna ask where to sleep. Yeah. I guess life will be golden. Right. And we now we know with a deeper level of understanding, life is more than about being able to eat and have somewhere to sleep. You know what I mean? Right. What makes life lovely, what makes life golden is 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 the, is the relationships, is the people you get to be with, is kissing your children, you know what I mean? It's looking at the sunrise and shit over a beautiful ocean, you know what I mean? Like, all that shit is what makes life, like, fun. Right. Like, just surviving is like, yo, you... Like you said, a, brother, a man nah. that has nothing. Here we go. Can survive. Here we go. Go ahead. Because the LeBron school... Kind of like came with like a brochure oh, of right. all this shit oh, that, that you do. get. Yeah, right, 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 right. That they're gonna get when they go to the, to the LeBron school, <laughs> like free food, free this, yeah, yeah, free yeah, that, yeah. free bikes, and all this shit. But you don't know what the curriculum is gonna be when you get there. Mm. But they're yeah. gonna actually teach. And I think I said I'm. I mean, I've posted it. But I think I thought, I think I made it there. I said, you know, it's just going to be cool. No, I did post it. As long as they teach, you know, like history and, you know, shit like that, they they, they kind of touch on knowledge itself. Like, like you know, like shit like that. Yeah. Yeah, to me, as I long as they say, go through that. My add-on would be, and I, and I, let me start out. What it looked like, I applaud what the man is trying to do, right? From what I yeah. understand about yeah. it. Part of the requirement of even going to the school is actually the kids that are most struggling in the other parts of their district is the kids that that school is targeted for. So the okay. kids that ain't at grade level, the kids that ain't basically ain't making it already, okay. like first, okay. second grade, and you okay. already like, yo, he ain't making it. <laughs> like this little dude, little dude right here is not going to make it. Facts. You know what I mean? So off top, however, the proof, the proof is going to be Yo, are you doing a robust experience for them babies that if they come in there? And I, and, and I say this for somebody that worked in a school at least for a time when I was there, where babies was coming in in sixth grade behind in math, behind in reading, and leaving in eighth grade on schedule, right? Mm. They was turning, you know, kids was coming in here, and they was leaving on schedule, mm. which was like, yo, this is... You know, warm my heart, made my day, because I knew like some of you babies, whatever the struggles they was going through, by the time they got to end of eighth grade, they was on. They was. And you on witnessed track. that. I witnessed that. Okay. I was in a school that was doing that, and to see that sort That's of thing peace. is like, yo, this is beautiful. This makes me like, you know I mean, I'm gonna start tearing up in this joint, right? Because right. I know, I one, I tell people all the time, and this is when I tell my the families that I've worked with, you know, really before, but at least for the last ten years, you want to do anything. Read to your kids every day from day one, out the gate. Because if your kids can't read, they can't read. They can't read people. They can't read circumstances. They can't read life situations. They can't understand what the hell's going on. They do not understand what behavior is appropriate to get their needs met. This society runs on literacy. And when your children are illiterate, they cannot function. They will, they will, they will act out. They'll snap out. And eventually, they will find a place for them. Because they will not behave. Not saying that you need to behave, but they do. They will not have be able to develop their own self control to articulate what they want in the world because they won't have the, the skills, you know, whether that's verbal language, you know, you know, mental, so, social, emotional development, whatever. You gotta, you know, we we have to set those parameters. Now I understand life is real. Shit happens. Yeah, you know I mean, you are where you are. Maybe you wasn't reading all like that at one point, and then you got on it. You know what I mean? But that's what I tell. But that's my suggestion. Like, if you can do nothing else, 
besides, you know, the, ba- the basic survival, you know, food, clothing, and shelter. Read. Then read. Okay. <laughs> food, clothing, shelter. Okay. Read. Okay. Right? Okay. So, you know, tying back to the movie, you got a situation where, you know, our society wants you to, one, one wants you to be in a, a state of trauma and then wants you to identify with that trauma to make decisions. Right? So you like, man, I'm stressed. Let me get, let me get this. Let me get some of this water. Let me pour some of that so I can relax. Let me pop. Let me pop something so I can lay down. Let me smoke something up. Let me go turn up in the club. You know what I mean? And ultimately, you know, it's all good in the hood if you can do that and be healthy for your family and for your kids. But a lot of times, a lot of us can't. You can't maintain that balance. You know what I mean? If you if your primary thing is trying to relieve your own pain and tension all the time, you are probably gonna go over the line at some point. You know what I mean? If, unless you got something else, you don't got you got some other value system. You got other people around you to tap you and go, oh, whoa, whoa, whoa. You know the best thing to actually be mellow sometimes is having a good confidant to add on with and talk about how you feel. Mm. <laughs> you know, and also uh, maybe a therapist. You know, I know how that is. Some people, mental health. You know what I mean? Maybe, it's your pa- maybe you want to go talk to your pastor. Maybe you yeah. want to talk to the imam. Right, right. You know what I mean? But right. you need to go to somebody. Somebody. And confide in them like, yo, I'm stressed. I'm going through it right now. Yo, you therapy know, is dope. You know what I mean? And I guess the other thing I would say, um, was there anything? Uh, I'm going to ask you a question. Facebook here. is not therapy. Yes, Facebook is not therapy. I'm going to ask you a question. Was there anything in the movie that surprised you, um, and not the obvious thing that I'm gonna ask you about in a minute, or I'm gonna give you a response to what I think about it. Beyond the, uh, the, the, cause you know, there's a turn in the movie where um, he's at the party and he goes down the, in the wrong bathroom. Right. Right, so we gotta talk about that part. Okay, okay. <laughs> Is there anything else in the movie that just stood out to you that you was like, yo, that's ill, that the way they brought that up? You gotta give me a hint, man. Uh, I mean, anything. I don't know. You tell me what you think about it. I see the beauty in every movie, man. I, don't, I haven't seen a movie yet that I haven't really thought that, that I haven't seen something that was dope in. Right. Um, I mean, but I want to know. You, you, if you can give me an all you, God. All right, I'm gonna say this. We and I don't know if it's on this tape or not, but we had started out a little bit this art, this conversation, talk about rapping. And, and we mean before. Okay, this. right. So All right. So I'm like, I kind of knew that was going to happen. Yeah. But it was ill. First of all, all right, hold on. <laughs> I already posted that. Okay. And peace to Star from Star and Bug Show. You know, the hater talking about the N word. Mm. Like, can we get past the N word? Is it over for the fucking N word? Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? Have we overused yeah. the N word? When, you know, I think, you know, people think that because you're black, that you can rap. Right. Automatically. Yeah. You can rap, sing, or dance. We know many people. Well, once you are black, if you are black, you know many people who don't have rhythm. They can't, they can't dance, dance. They can't sing. They can't work. They can't clap. They can't sing. <laughs> they can't you, clap. They can't snap. They can't rap. <laughs> but just because you're fucking black, you can rhyme. Yeah. You can spit an immaculate freestyle off top of the dome because you're black. And... In the movie, when that was like, when, when it was asked of him to like kick a rap, like, yo, yo can you rap? Basically, kind of like a dog and pony show. Yeah. Like, can you like perform? Right. Can you, like, can you entertain show? us? Because <laughs> all we see from y'all is entertainment. Yeah. What you bring forth to this table is entertainment. Right. We're not what your equality is, is entertainment. So. Even if you fucking say, yo, you know what? I ain't that guy. I can't rap. It's not me. I can't dance. I'm sorry. Yo. That's not me. That's not my skill set. Right. (laughs) 
it's still like, no, you nah, gotta do something. Come on. Come on. Come on, man. Give something. us a come on, you got something. So then you get up there, and I thought I was kind of ill, because you give them mm -hmm. something that they want. <laughs> or something that, that they want to say, but they can't say. But they just love to hear it. Yeah. And they love to hear, unfortunately, us degrade ourselves. They love to see and hear us say, nigga, 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 what, nigga, shit, nigga, 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 shit, nigga, fuck, nigga, fuck, nigga, 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 shit, nigga, shit, motherfucker, nigga, shit, nigga, shit, nigga, shit, motherfucker, nigga, shit, nigga, shit, nigga, that's all, that's all he was saying. But he had the crowd like, Nigga shit, nigga shit, motherfucker, nigga shit, nigga shit, nigga shit, yeah. motherfucker, nigga shit. And it was like, what? Oh. And yo, and honestly, that was the ill visual though. In the movie theater, it was a lot of white people in the movie theater. Word is born, it was like maybe like eight black people, right? What it was that? like eight of it was like eight of us, like mm -hmm. four, uh, whatever it was. It was like bugged out, and it was like. I feel uncomfortable. And the reason why I posted about the N word, I, I I I agree. Yo, of course you gonna say, yo, we're gonna say it. There's a time and a place, but we don't need to say it as much. But it's definitely I feel uncomfortable playing music that has all this nigga stuff in it. Because it's like, you know what's kinda like uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. And it sounds it's, like it's, it's, it's a filler. Yeah, yeah, versus yeah. it was before. Right. It's yeah. a filler more more than anything. If you, if you like, 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 like just stone cold selling degradation. Yes, sir. And I feel like the um, the, you know, the the love love slam is if you giving us the uh, information in a context that relates to your experience or your background uh, versus just you know saying what you got to say. Peace. So, I would say my my one closing thought on the, on the flick, and one I suggest everybody go out and see it. And when if you missed it while it's out, when it comes to the other forms, that you go scoop it up. And this will be my only foreshadowing thought: is that they will make a jackass out of you if you let them. Oh, <laughs> well, well, that was like that kind of was like the first. I mean, that like within the movie, you was yeah, like, yeah, "Wow!" Yeah. I mean, like, but it's, but you know, my understanding that I took from that is they will make a jackass out of you. Oh, cause, if you let them, because the horse swag, yeah, jackass, yeah. Horse. they'll make oh. you into, make you into some other bullshit. If you let them, oh, they shit. will play you the fuck out. Oh shit! Don't, don't go for the oh okay, though, shit. Don't that's for, it. That's how I took don't it. make a jackass out of you if you, if let, you them. let them. That's it. You know what I mean? I don't know that's if that's it. what the Brother Boots was trying to say, but that's what I that's, that's it. how I see it. You that's I mean? it. Hopefully I'll get an opportunity to build with him and, and get it from get it from him. You know that's I mean? it. So and folks I'm, will take the bait. Yeah. The you, him, yeah. Oh, we'll give you this why 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 why. Yeah. Okay. Sounds good. Right. Sounds good. Right. Sounds good. You know what I mean? Right. Next thing you know, you out here jackass. Anyway. <laughs> anyway. Either, but, 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 but any either way. Like you did, you tried to like deny it, decline it, but you was already you took the bait anyway. Right, you took it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Never go into a motherfucker's office or personal space and yeah, just, just start taking to shit. Take shit, drinks, yeah. And yeah, none of that. Well, none, do none of that. <laughs> so I'm gonna he ask God because we we was in a, we was in a tight space. You know what I mean, anything because we're gonna we're gonna come to a close. Almost. Okay, and I love you. Well, anything you just want to say for the love of the people of the world before we before we tap out. Um, I don't know if it's really towards the world, man, but hey. I think it's you know never you know never get, show more love to the underdog, man. Give more love to uh, give more attention to mm -hmm. and support to the person, situation, business, company. Program that 
is not getting the light, the attention that the masses are giving them. Right? right? So me, I personally love supporting like the underdog, the the starter up businesses, you know, shit like that, man. The ones who like, you know, really aren't, you know, um really given the opportunity to win or given the resources to win. But they still win anyway because it just it's just, you know, yeah, destined. Yeah. Like that is you know you know you know what I mean? Um I think that, you know, without uh I kind of still want to do the the, the Rodney Dangerfield <laughs> was that? Oh, project, no. <laughs> man. Because I think, you know, uh, I don't, you know, I think, you know, us five percenters, man, we've been, like, in the background of a lot of shit that's moving popular and moving, you know, uh, successfully these days, knowing that the people who are being successful and moving in in those directions have been taught and given so many things from us mm-hmm. and them not throwing a rope back or shining light on on that fact that mm-hmm. they may have built with Justice Raji <laughs> or they may have built with Nabri like behind the scenes and we may have gave them ideas and, you know, uh, Helped and assisted them, you know, with their, you know, movement with their paths, and they've reached a certain plateau, and it's like it seems like, you know, all these big wide names or people who are around them immediately, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. you know, on the front line were there, yeah. but knowing it was us or brothers like us who was there, you know, from day one from the start when they were nobodies, um, before they were somebody's. Um, I want us to get our props, man. You know, I want us to get our props in the. Give us our props. Give us our roses while we still here. Yes, sir. Not while we're not here. You know what I'm saying? So I would like, I would like that to be done, and it's no problem. And you're not gonna go to jail. You know, you're not gonna get killed (laughs) for saying that you, you know, you build, you asked your old head, Justice Raji or Nabri or. I'm majestic knowledge bill for some insight on some shit, and they gave it to you, and you became a successful business owner, or you became a successful, you know, uh, rapper, or successful designer, or successful author, whatever. Mm-hmm. You know, um, I would like the underdogs to, you know, get more shine and get more, you know, attention and. Light from the people, right? Uh, That's yeah. That's beef, <laughs> yo. Now, nah, Bree, it has been a pleasure. It couldn't have. It couldn't have gone any other way. Quite frankly, it couldn't have been any other way. I am so thankful to be here with you this morning. Likewise, um, I thank you and appreciate you for sharing with me. And um. With that, I'm going to say, you know, this has been the Ash Your Old Head Podcast with Justice Raji and my illustrious and glorious guest, my brother, Nabri Savior. Yes, sir. You know what I'm saying? Peace. You know what I mean? Be safe, and we'll catch you on the next one. Peace. 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 Thank you for listening to the Ash Your Old Head Podcast with Justice Raji. Thank you to my guest, Nabri Savior, my good brother. Thank you for sharing with me. That's the Jitney hat. You can see and hear my brother uh, on the internets in various places. Um, In the show notes, you will see a link to his uh, most recent project on SoundCloud, Jitney hat. So click on that, tune in and listen. Um, In other news, the first shirt, uh, first T-shirt, design i'm putting out there uh for the world based on some of the work and some of the thoughts related to this podcast should be up and live uh this weekend if everything goes as scheduled so you can either just click on the ash old head podcast you know that's ash um search 
Ask your old head. Search Justice Rod G. Um, find my shop on Etsy under Ask Your Old Head. You'll see the art, the culture shirt available for your uh, wearing pleasure. You know, um, lots of ideas and thoughts generating, germinating, you know, coming into creation. So if you like the shirt, please add on. If you, maybe it's not for you, but you think a friend would dig the concept, you know, pass it along. Let them uh, make that decision, make that purchase. Uh, all proceeds go to the creation of this art. Um, I appreciate you for listening. Uh, a lot more things coming in the near future, including much better uh, closeout music. Yeah, although this is a fun little thing I put together via the tools I have available. In any event, you can always find me on Twitter, Instagram at just I F E. That's J U S T underscore I F E. Uh, you can search me on Facebook. Just look up the podcast, ask your old head, and you should find the page. Um, that would be the place to add on with me, not my personal Facebook page, unless we tight like that. You know what I mean? Or you slipped in under the radar back in the day when I was just adding people. In any event, appreciate you for listening to the show. Please listen, rate, subscribe, share, um, and connect You know, with those who you think would enjoy. Peace.